Yeah, I'm uh, an anarcho-Marxist. I belong to um, Class War, which is an organization of revolutionary communists and anarchists who are fighting to overthrow the capitalist system and the rule of the aristocracy, the landed gentry, the rich and powerful, in support of working people and poor people. I'm the fourth Baron Roallan, Lord Roallan, known as Johnny to his friends. An upper house should exist to stop the extremities of politics. I've been brought up, I mean, ever since I was a little boy, that one day it would be my right to sit in the House of Lords. It should act as a break to knee-jerk reactions to temporary outbreaks of passion or stupidity in the community. This House does that. The House of Lords, uh, unde undemocratic, unrepresentative, unjust, uh, needs abolition as a prelude to the abolition of the Commons, which is also unrepresentative, uh, not useful, and doesn't serve the interests of the working class. Aristocracy, as old-fashioned, has stopped, and the working classes have uh, ceased to uh, exist as well. Well, basically, people who say there isn't any class uh, must live on a different planet. Uh, yes, I am an aristocrat. Yes, I've got L-O-R-D in front of my name. But no, I haven't got a silver spoon in my mouth. And no, I am not an alien from outer space. I'm totally convinced that during the course of the week that this person is staying with me, that I will persuade him that the lifelong views he's had are wrong. Yeah, Trafalgar Square. Uh, scene of the glorious class war poll tax riot. They only ever come to London to shout at people, by the way. You don't come here for any other reason. The Englishman said it's Westminster, the Scotsman he said near. Geordie said it's a bloody disgrace that ought to be blown away. For this programme, ex-miner and class war anarchist Dave Douglas will spend a week with hereditary Tory peer Lord Johnny Rowallan. How do? Hello, we meet the last. You all right? All right? Nice to meet you. Dave has joined Johnny for his last day in the House of Lords before recess. The Lords is to be reformed, and many peers will have to go. Johnny is a staunch supporter of the Upper House and wants to be one of those who stays. Anyway, we're sitting here on the terrace, which is a view you've probably seen hundreds of times from different places. Yeah. And the bit you're looking at immediately behind me on the second floor is the Lord Chancellor's department mm. with the red curtains there. And all this that's red and white is House of Lords. What are your politics? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Marxist, um, but I describe myself as an anarcho-Marxist. I'm in, in the camp of, the, of, of anarchism rather than in Marxist-Leninism. A lot of the people I went around with when I was a hippie in the 60s uh, in America will probably be Marxist now that they've grown up, but at the time mm. we all were very much believers of sort of love and peace. You can tell by the tie where your hippie lineage is still there. <laughs> right? You don't accept you to warn it as a headband in them bit. <laughs> that's, that's, that's absolutely uh, true, actually. Just see a cup can with everything. Dave and Johnny will spend a week on the Rowallan estate in Scotland. Johnny has had to sell the two family castles and now lives in an eight-bedroom farmhouse with stables. He runs a thriving show jumping business. Dave immediately makes himself feel at home and joins the Rowallan family for breakfast. Milk, no problem, coming up. Sugar as well? Yes, Only the one thing in the world I can't eat is beans. Really? Beans has this devastating effect and that's uh, yeah. definitely a no-no starter for Ted. Uh, <laughs> I'm jet propelled for the rest of the day, so I'll I give those a miss. This is uh, our formal sitting mm. drawing, which we don't actually use an awful lot. That is my uh, great grandmother that uh, choked on the chicken bone, right. died age 36, that Rowallan was built for. Great which, grandmother. Uh, and that actually is the old castle of Rowallan on this picture here, right. Uh, right behind. Johnny's tales of castles so, uh, and privilege provoke yeah. Dave to explain how his experiences as a miner gave rise to revolutionary convictions. And you know, you can't win, because when we try to go back to a situation and say, we want to keep our jobs, 
We don't want unemployment. We don't want to be faced with the, the situation we've got with pit communities that are abandoned now and heroin, heroin addiction is now rife in pit communities, the same as it is in inner cities. Everywhere. Because, but that's because they took away uh, what we had. I mean, there comes a point when people have to resist and have to fight back. And it becomes not only right to do that, but wrong not to do that. I go along entirely with what you say up to the point when you say that you have to resort to violence to do it. And that is where, that, that, that is where mm. my understanding of the word anarchy and your understanding of the word anarchy split. Would you, uh, agree, would you agree that poverty is violence? Social deprivation is violence? Early no. death is violence. No, I wouldn't agree with that. What I would agree, it, what, what I would say is that all those three things you've just mentioned are a source of great sadness to me that they should exist at all. Mm. But, but, it's, but it's not violence. And say it's sadly only half built. So Johnny so. takes Dave to see Rowallan Castle. The bit in the middle. Until he reluctantly that sold it to private developers, Johnny had lived there all his life. This is an obnoxiously large place for one family to live in. You must agree. No, I'm afraid I, 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 I don't agree with it. it, it is, uh, um, no one family needs to live in a place like this. For God's sake, uh, that, that this is bigger than some hospitals. This is now going to go to private concern for private paying guests who are going to be top of the range gadgets. It's not, it's not necessarily just exclusive for what do you call them? Ganges? Houses such as these should be given back to the people. Well, Dave, this is the inside of the home which I spent all my life in, really. It looks so bad I'm taking the right pictures of the bad We're getting an hour up to the roof, and uh, the view from the top, I assure you, will be worthwhile. Right. So, wow. Oh. I must admit, I, I, I mean, I just love this place so much, and I'm delighted if we can keep it uh, intact um, because there's something awfully special about it mm -hmm. in my heart. I find it very hard actually to put into words the feelings I have for this house. I, 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 I really do. I felt sorry for him. Um, he obviously loved that building, the old family home today and it caused him real grief, the fact that he had to give it up. Um, I mean, that's the way things go. Change is very, very, can be very, very painful. Yeah. I'm a victim of, um, of change from the other side, um, like, like hundreds of thousands of other miners who were taken out of their jobs, thrown out of their communities, destroyed with culture, destroyed with way of life. I know how, how bitterly uh, sad that can be. Um, it's, the difference is that I don't think ours was necessary. Um, Whereas I think his is, um, but that doesn't mean it's it's any less painful. The following day, Johnny gives Dave a taste of the sporting pursuits of a country lord. Make the most of it; it won't last long. You've not got much longer. <laughs> Talk soon turns to the coming revolution. You can't genuinely believe that in 2000, the, the masses are going to rise against what, whatever Against the ruling class. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm very interested to know, you know, as who far as we're is this army? The, potentially 75% of the population, because that's the working class. Oh, go away and chase yourself <laughs> up a gum tree. Absolutely. 75% of the population are working class. Dave, you're talking through a hole in your ass. So, uh, it's, uh, well, you're part of this government in the state and they produced, they produced, the, they produced that on the question of in distribution of income and wealth and social, social groups. And if you take all the sociological verbiage away, you're talking about 75% of the population. No, 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 look, no, look, at, no. look, look it up. Put it the other way around, as I said to you, as I said to you last night. Somewhere in the region of 80% of all wealth is in the hands of 10% of the population. Right? That only leaves 10% to have with the other 90% of the population. And that's not even equally divided. And they have addressed our score of 30. He's got to go back in. You're right. So, primitive control. And how I Oh! 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 Oh!
That. No, you see why. That's why we show jump. <laughs> That's why we That's show why jump. That's why we show jump. Right. I mean, I don't know how much of a fluke that was, but both those horses could have broke both of their legs. Eh? I agree. Unfortunately, it's risks. You take risks. Ah, well, go. It's the same. It's the same thing that they're making horses do as they've done, like in the old days of the cavalry when they rode them into cannons and stuff like that. Dave's obvious horror at the horses falling leaves Johnny and Claire somewhat perplexed. I, I, I'm just not getting those vibes that, 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 that this revolution, that he's expecting this revolution to take place. Um, yes, but, uh, is this revolution a violent revolution? Well, we're still trying to find out what, 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 no, what, 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 totally what's anti violence. violence. Uh, we know he's anti violence, so he says, but. You know, there is no other way to get a, rev a successful revolution uh, without resorting, unfortunately, to violence. So there is no, no such thing in a democracy as being able to uh, have a takeover uh, in a peaceful fashion. Yeah, but Dave still hasn't told us where the leaders or where these people are all going to come from. 75%... There are no leaders in an anarchy. The Dave that I see and has been living with me um, is, is not a violent person in any way that I, that I can see. I mean, maybe there is a completely different Dave again who, when he's fueled up with his friends, gets uh, into sort of... But, you know, I just actually don't see it because the Dave that is coming across to me and the Dave that I'm talking to says he's actually anti-physical violence. Well, he hasn't actually seen a copy of the classical paper yet, so um, I'm just about to give him one. Um, and I'm just going to have a quick look through it again to remind myself <laughs> what we've said in this edition. <laughs> right, I've read this class war. Uh, frankly, it uh, horrifies me. Um, I, don't, I can't abide bad language in, in, in print anyway. Um, but... Uh, some of this is just uh, beyond um, any bounds of anybody's decency, I would have thought. Um, certainly, uh, you know, talking about uh, burning people, I mean, to say that it, it, it's good that people have died, um, to make an attack on the Queen Mother, who probably is one of the most uh, revered people in Britain today. Oh no, they've got a list of the idle rich. Top 10. Pippa Kidson Trigg, I kid you not, this is her name. London Socialist Organiser of the Countryside Alliance. Camilla Parker Bowles, silly name, silly woman. Tiggy Leg Bork, Tiggy Leg Bork, the Prince's nanny and surrogate mother. And Lieutenant Colonel Sir Ascot Molesworth St. Auburn. He's a Cornish landowner with the silliest name of all the ruling class in Britain. Now we've got a delightful statement here from the class war in South Yorkshire. I know because I wrote it. Um, and it goes on. So, you know, he might not find it all that bad after all. It's really... I think the best word I could use for it is pathetic. Yeah. Disgusting. Later that evening, Dave joins Johnny and Claire's closest friends for dinner. Lord Rollin, will I come down to see your flowers now? Will I come down here now and I'll just show you some things I planted in? I couldn't tell it to be a red one and a yellow one. He couldn't. He's as thick as mince he is. But anyway, I do all the planting, I do all the growing, and he does the looking. <laughs> The conviviality of the evening is soon soured by the appearance of the Class War magazine. It is Claire who takes Dave to task. How can you support Class War when there's a photograph of a policeman on fire there and yet you were so horrified when you saw a horse fall and hurt its knees and then get up and jump the fence? I mean, how, how, can, you, how can you support that? 
Mm. You see a man on fire, and, and that's, the man's obviously going to die, and the horse obviously got up, it jumped the fence and went on. He would, the horse would actually be fine. Okay, it probably had a bit of bruising later, but you absolutely felt sick with that. Mm. So t explain it to me, please, I really want to know. For a time when I was, from I was about 14 to 15 or whatever, I went along with the idea that the most logical conclusion of my ideas was pacifism. And that it didn't matter what violence was used against me, I would never use any violence back. So you disapprove of right? violence? No, no. This is how I started off thinking. And that all violence was the same. And I concluded it wasn't. And that there was a difference between the violence of those who were oppressed and the violence of those that were doing the oppressor. The violence yeah. of somebody that was poor and, and, and weak against the strong had to be legitimate. But would you set if a I, man on fire? During the miners' strike, 20,000 20, armed a man cops. On fire? In 20, 000, I've thrown Molotov cocktails during that strike. Did you? Yeah. But Dave, that's hypocrisy. It's how, not hypocrisy. It is. How could Anybody you feel sick at a horse falling at a fence because and, I then, hate, and then throw a Molotov because I, cocktail? Because I hate violence. Well, ha well no, you just thrown the, you've just thrown the Molotov cocktail. Because it's necessary to fight back. It's not because you enjoy that. But not by setting a policeman on fire. fire. You've got to remember, the first people that died during the strike were our people, who were unarmed people standing on picket lines. OK. So, uh, I suppose this was the, uh, the bear pit insofar as I was thrown into um, a lot of opposition. They weren't too chuffed about class war, the paper. Mm. I wasn't really expecting that there would be. I dreaded giving them it because it doesn't in one sense explain what we stand for. It actually demonstrates how we oppose it demonstrates um, our reactions to, to the system that oppresses us and how we oppose it. It is a kind of a war manifesto rather than a, um, a peace programme. The next day, the tables are turned. Johnny leaves his country estate for the streets of Glasgow where he has agreed to meet some of Dave's class war comrades. You see the slogan? It's not just me. I honestly did not paint that last night. No, you were with me last night. That's I'll right. give you that, so there, you, there you go. Definitely. Talking about revolution, people thought, hey, it's me. David, how are you doing? Hey, David. Hey, David. All right. This is his lordship. Hi, uh, uh, Johnny. Lord how Rwanda. do you do? How's it Johnny? How do you do? Lord Rwanda. Although I got pissed the other night, and I think I called him Lord Rwanda. It makes no... Uh, I was saying, we were saying about whether or not the working class exists. Yes. And I started off earlier in the week saying to you that not only did the class system still exist, but the gap between the rich and the poor is getting wider. And although the cake's a wee bit bigger, our share of it is less than it was a hundred bloody years yeah, ago. But is the, is and you're saying, no, no, that only a few people the at the bottom have fell the through split, the net. The, the split may be getting wider, but is the number at the bottom end not actually smaller than it was. I think there's the facts and the figures can be researched, but I think uh, you'll find that Dave's quite correct and the actual gap has got larger. As I was going to say earlier, go to any city in Britain, but it happened to be in Glasgow just now, the homelessness is huge, it is massive. Uh, drug addiction is huge, it is massive. Young people selling their bodies in the street is huge and it's massive. I would suggest that there's not too many of these people, in fact I would suggest there wasn't any of these people who came from a rich background. They did not suddenly uh, become okay, that but way then, through choice. In order, in order to be yeah. able to take the heroin, I mean if they didn't spend all that money on heroin and drink and fags, no, they, would, the they, they, they would be a lot better off. You have to look at the cause. The majority of people that you see lying uh, in yeah, cardboard right. boxes are there right. because they want to be, not because they're forced to be. There is a wall... They want to be in cardboard boxes. A lot of them do because they don't want people to be part of the system. To they want to get boxes. out of the system. I say that you're an intelligent enough bloke. Right, I don't think you're stupid. I do not think you're stupid, I think you're intelligent, I think you're probably Thank you very pretty much. well educated. Thank you very much. I do not believe that you believe that the people choose to live oh in cardboard boxes. John, I find you incredibly naive. 
to say that you're a member of the House of Lords, right, mm -hmm. and you're there in government ruling over us, you know fuck all about politics, by the way. I'm amazed how little you know about politics. You believe you've got a divine right to help to govern us. You told me you believed it was your destiny to go there and be part of that. Yes. We I... ordinary folk cannot accept that, he, that anybody has given you the right to rule, rule us. I mean, perhaps you could share this little insight that God yes, I... has given you. All right, well, <laughs> I do believe I've got a, a, a divine right, but I also believe very fervently that it was not my choice to have that divine right. It was right. God's, it, was it? it, it well, it... it I don't know whether it was God or, it or, or the finger of fate or what the hell, whatever it was, but the, you know, uh, someone came down and I popped out as the firstborn son of my mother by my father. As I said to you, this class war has now to do with personalities. And as it turns out, John, you're a nice bloke. I say that no, it's unconditionally. Very nice, very nice Listen, to say you're a nice no? bloke, John. Uh, but had you been a nasty bastard, had you been a Colonel Blimp in your face, get off my land, you red bastards, one of those people, it would have been made for better television because it would have had mere arguments. But it's not about that. It's about the fact that you have got the divine right to rule over me. You were born to rule over me. You've told me it was your destiny. Yes. Wait a minute. Uh -huh. It's my destiny as a working class person to say to you, John, you're not on. You've got no right to rule me or anybody else. Back to the estate, where the Lord and the worker toil, side by side. Strike off your chains, sons and daughters of labour. Waken all humanity, for victory is near. So forward, you workers, freedom awaits you. On all the world, on the land, on the sea. On with the fight for the cause of humanity. March, march the toilers, all the world will be free. As communists, we're trying to change society. We want people to live in a better way. And I mean, comes a glorious day, he doesn't have to go against the wall. There's no wrong, as far as I'm concerned, with him operating this farm as probably a, a cooperative, along with the grooms and the farmhands here, and them all pitching in sharing the returns and sharing the work. If, uh, hypothetically, there was a revolution um, and Dave was leading the workers uh, against um, myself, I think he would tell his mates, leave him alone, he's not, a, he's not as bad as the rest. So yes, we would be on opposite sides. Um, I would like to think, though, that uh, if I saw uh, Dave being kicked to death by some uh, policeman or trampled on by a police force, I would go in and pull him out of the fray and I would like to think that he would return the compliment. Uh, there's a wee gremlin in there trying to see if this man's made of a man or he's just a wee moose. <laughs> it's a knack to them, but some of them have grown roots. <laughs> <laughs> they definitely come out a little bit easier when it's very wet. Today, we're going to clear pigeon shooting. I used to be a good shot, but the eyesight's gone a little bit, so I hope I don't do too badly against his lordship, or it's going to look like uh, the revolution's going to flounder the first time we take up arms. It's Dave's last day. It is also Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother's birthday. Which way do you think would go in a referendum? I think, I mean, no question the royal family would want to be kept on. Uh, there are some members of the royal family who are more popular than this others. Like in your, say, this is, is like this, your... Say, I'm sure in your movement there are some people more popular than others. We should have done but a you cannot possibly say that Princess Anne, the Princess Royal, is not a popular person. She's not a she, popular she, person. She, she is might a be in the horse's she, head, but she's no, not among anybody she, else. She, oh, she most certainly is. She's, no, she worked, she's done an enormous amount of charity work. Well, Princess good for Diana her, she in her day to. was uh, did, 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 did an enormous amount of work for charity and was extremely popular. Um, well, she wasn't know. popular among some sections of the ruling class, including including the monarchy, by the way. She, I don't know. Do you know no, the majority, would, of, would, would, you know the majority of people there, in Britain that believe all. that Diana was murdered by the monarchy? 
majority of people in Britain yeah, believe that. I think they might, they might believe that, it came, that, 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 that she was murdered by other forces, but certainly it was not the monarchy that The did majority it. of people no, believe yeah, that absolute. the monarchy itself You're were away. up to their armpits in the murder of Diana. It's a matter of time before the monarchy is abolished. No, Dave, I'm afraid again, you say you're living in the past. In your You've lifetime, come... not only will you go, the Lords go, but the monarchy will go too. I think you, well, I think you'll be proved wrong, and I sincerely hope you are proved to be wrong, and I think it's, one thing is for absolute certainty. One is thing for absolute certainty. Your peasant revolt will never take place. Your lifetime, your children's, grandchildren's, great-grandchildren's, there will never be a peasant revolt because there are only uh, three or four of you that feel the way you want. <laughs> that you want. Remember, adults come forward at the same time, go over the Dave and Johnny spend their last evening together at a Row Allen show jumping event. I do like him. I know perfectly well I shouldn't like him because he stands for an awful lot of things that I don't approve of in any way. In fact, they're things that really quite concern me that anybody in this day and age, they shouldn't hold views like that. When he says, yes, he would set a peaceful on fire, that sort of business. That is what annoys me that I actually like him. Those views, that's what annoys me that I actually like him. Next one in, please. Next person to the room. It's more difficult seeing um, the ruling class and the aristocracy as flesh and blood living human beings instead of just some iniquitous class. I only hope that the people don't draw the wrong impression from that. My hatred of the ruling class is very deep but I have no personal animosity against this guy or against the Queen for that matter. Dave Forward. Dave has been living with me for the last week in Clare. And he doesn't exactly approve of me as an aristocrat, but we've been trying a week to persuade him that I'm actually not too bad a chap. I think we might have succeeded in that bit, but anyway, here he goes then. <laughs> Dave gives out the awards then. And a very fine win indeed to Beth. Second award to Lucy. Third award goes to Victoria with Chrissy. That's my niece, in fact. So, whoops. Thank you very much, Dave, for giving out those awards, and thank you for your company for the week. I'm going to miss the dogs. This one's my pal. This one's organising the revolution on the side. This is uh, this is uh, Comrade Kropotkin here. It's all right, he's on our side, comrade. He might not be. All right. All right, doggy. Rise, throw off your chains. Bit and spur will rust forever. Cruel whips no more will crack. Remember the words of beasts of England from Animal Farm. Beasts of England, beasts of Ireland, beasts of every land and chime. <laughs>